the next of the season's new look cars to appear in public was the Stewart Ford, which will be driven by Jan Magnussen and Rubens Barrichello. The changes due for the start of this year were no surprise, and early last year, not long after initial design work had started on the new chassis for 98, Ford and Cosworth decided this would be the ideal moment to make fundamental changes to the ZTEC V10 engine. As the engine and chassis designs progressed along the same timeline, it provided a perfect opportunity for both sets of designers to collaborate very closely on lowering the center of gravity, reducing overall width and improving airflow, an essential approach to the overall philosophy in order to claw back as many of the disadvantages as the new rules have brought. Unveiled at Ford's Engineering Research Center at Dunton in the UK, the SF2 is the second all-new Grand Prix car the Stewart team has produced in its two-year history. A tall order for any team, but massively steep for a new team. Designer Alan Jenkins pointed out the obvious truth. It would have been much easier for the team to have run a development version of last year's SF1. But the new rules mean there's virtually no carryover from last year, apart from minor items of running gear. That placed a huge demand on the resources of Formula One's youngest team still in its first season, making the achievements of Monaco and Montreal seem even more significant when viewed in that context. But even so, no one at Stewart expects this coming season to be any easier. If anything, they're preparing for it to be even harder. Historically, in fact, no new team has had an easy time in its second year, a fact which Jackie Stewart has not overlooked, and he too expects year two to be even more difficult for the new team than year one. We are a new team. We're not a small team, but we are new. We don't have the resources, either financially or in human terms, that the big teams have. So we've struggled to get it ready this early but on the other hand we felt as if we needed to because we'll have to test sometime in January and also in February and you know people seem to forget we've got to be in Australia by uh, the weekend of the 8th of March so there isn't much time. This year every team in the pit lane will need every tiny advantage it can scavenge from a rule book which is set out to reduce downforce and mechanical grip cutting cornering speeds and adding seconds to every lap. Well, I don't know yet. I've been, I drove the, the groove tires with a, with a wide car and then I drove the narrow car with the normal rain tires because it was raining when I went to Barcelona. So it's, it's hard to know. Uh, it's less grip, so you have to be very smooth. We're smooth with the throttle as well when you're trying to, to put the power down. So it's, it's, it's going to be a, a different mixture. You have to, to be more smooth anyway. Some say that starting from a clean sheet of paper this year will level the playing field between the big teams and the smaller ones. But the wise council holds that big budgets and resources will always have an advantage over smaller ones, even though Stewart is well-funded and well-supported. I think the new engine is going to help us. I think we're unquestionably going to be more reliable than we were last year. And I think our aim is now to be regular top 10 runners, both in qualifying and racing, and therefore to get into the top six, at least to pick up more than double digits or 10 points in the Constructors and Drivers World Championships. Every team has been working flat out in testing, looking for every scrap of improvement over their wind tunnel cars. But previous experience indicates that big teams with big budgets and big resources will find their baseline quickest and be able to make steady improvements in the car concurrently with their race program. Little teams like Stewart won't be able to keep up.